Do you ever wonder if the existence of God can be proven through sheer logic and reason? Greetings, dear viewers, and welcome to a deep dive into one of the most profound philosophical arguments ever proposed. Today, we embark on a journey through the mind of Avicenna, a towering figure in Islamic philosophy, as we explore his famous argument known as the proof of the truthful. Born in 980 CE in what is now Uzbekistan, Avicenna, also known as Ibn Sina, was not only a philosopher, but also a physician, astronomer, and writer. His influence stretched far and wide, transcending cultures and eras. Avicenna's philosophical contributions, particularly his arguments for the existence of God, have left an indelible mark on both Islamic and Western thought. One of his most significant contributions is the proof of the truthful, a compelling argument grounded in the nature of existence itself. Central to Avicenna's argument is the concept of the necessary existent, wajib al wujud. This idea posits that there must be an entity whose existence is intrinsic to its nature, an entity that cannot not exist. Avicenna contends that everything we observe in the universe is contingent, relying on something else for its existence. The necessary existent, in contrast, exists by its very essence and underpins the existence of all contingent beings. Avicenna's argument for the necessary existent starts with a contemplation of contingency. He reasons that the entire set of contingent things, everything that exists, has existed or will exist, must have an external cause. This cause cannot be contingent itself, as it would merely be part of the set. Therefore, the only logical conclusion is that there must be a necessary existent, an external cause that is not contingent and thus exists necessarily. Avicenna makes a clear distinction between contingent and necessary existence. Contingent things are those that require an external cause to exist, whereas a necessary existent has no such dependency. This fundamental distinction forms the backbone of Avicenna's argument, leading him to conclude that the necessary existent must have certain attributes, including unity, simplicity, and immateriality, which he equates with God. However, not everyone agreed with Avicenna's methodology. One of his notable critics was Averos, also known as Ibn Rushd. Averos, an avid follower of Aristotle, argued that proofs of God's existence should be based on observations of the natural world rather than metaphysical speculation. He believed that Avicenna's argument, though intellectually stimulating, lacked the empirical grounding that Aristotelian physics provided. Avicenna's proof stood out because it was primarily philosophical rather than theological. Unlike many arguments that rely on divine revelation or scripture, Avicenna sought to demonstrate God's existence through pure reason. This approach was revolutionary and appealed to those who sought a more rational foundation for their faith, making his argument appealing across different religious and philosophical traditions. To bridge the gap between the necessary existent and the god of Islamic theology, Avicenna derived specific attributes of the necessary existent. He argued that such a being must be unique and indivisible, using a method of reductio ad absurdum to show that multiple necessary existents would lead to contradictions. This uniqueness and simplicity, according to Avicenna, pointed directly to the oneness of God, a core tenet of Islamic belief. Avicenna's arguments bear a striking resemblance to later philosophical proofs, such as those by Thomas Aquinas and Duns Scotus, who were heavily influenced by his work. These Western Christian philosophers adapted Avicenna's ideas, incorporating them into their own theological frameworks. Similarly, Jewish philosophers like Maimonides found Avicenna's reasoning compelling and integrated it into their philosophical discussions.
Despite its elegance, Avicenna's proof was not without its detractors within the Islamic world. Al-Ghazali, a prominent theologian, argued against Avicenna's characterization of God. Al-Ghazali maintained that Avicenna's necessary existence was incompatible with the Islamic concept of a personal God who interacts with the world through free will. For Al-Ghazali, God's ability to choose freely was essential something he believed Avicenna's model failed to adequately explain. The classification of Avicenna's argument has sparked considerable debate among scholars. Some view it as an ontological argument, relying on the sheer logic of existence, while others see it as cosmological, grounded in the empirical observation that something exists. This debate underscores the unique nature of Avicenna's proof, which seems to straddle both categories, blending metaphysical reasoning with a form of cosmological necessity. Modern philosophers continue to engage with Avicenna's argument, recognizing its historical importance and its influence on subsequent philosophical thought. While some critics challenge the premises of contingency and necessity, Others appreciate the argument's elegance and logical rigor. This ongoing discourse highlights the enduring relevance of Avicenna's work in contemporary philosophy of religion. In today's philosophical landscape, Avicenna's proof of the truthful remains a significant point of reference. It serves as a reminder of the power of reason and the quest for understanding the fundamental nature of existence. Whether one accepts or rejects his conclusions, Avicenna's argument challenges us to think deeply about the nature of reality and our place within it. Thank you for joining me on this intellectual journey through Avicenna's proof of the truthful. His argument, intricate and thought-provoking, invites us to explore the intersection of philosophy and faith. As we ponder these timeless questions, we honor the legacy of a philosopher who dared to seek truth through reason. Until next time, stay curious and keep questioning.